What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 26 beta 9 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, we also got the ninth beta for iPadOS 26, watchOS 26, macOS 26 Tahoe, tvOS and HomePod version 26 along with visionOS 26. But as always in this video, we're talking all about iOS 26 beta 9 and what is new in the update. So starting off with the size of this update you could see it came in once again over 10 gigabytes for any apple intelligence device if you do not have an apple intelligence device it will most likely be a lot lower so let's go ahead and check out the build number for this new update so if we head into our settings general about new build 23a 5336a so that is another a at the end of the build number which is a good sign and if we go down to the modem firmware that is 2.04.06 on the iphone 16 series all right so now what's new here in ios 26 beta 9 and if you guys tuned in last week to watch my 26 beta 8 video here on the channel or if you've just been following ios betas for quite some time you would know not to expect many if any changes at least visual changes to the software in a very late beta like beta 8 or especially a beta 9. so these updates are typically reserved for bug fixes security enhancements code changes things on the back end that you can't necessarily see on the front end by going into settings or anything like that as a matter of fact if you take a look at the ipsw file which is the software file if you were to install it manually on your computer that is the same size as beta 8 which beta 8 was the same size as beta 7 so that tells you a lot right there it tells you that there are not many changes in the code even but that doesn't mean there are not any changes to the back end and the code because we do see some bug fixes in the release notes which I'll mention here in a moment and we also saw from Aaron P 613 on Twitter he did find some changes in the code so you can see these are both related to errors that are basically related to eSIM so contact carrier to set up eSIM and also transfer plan detail unsupported plan detail so both of those are new strings found in the code again nothing major but it is something that has changed and if we take a look at the release notes this is where you can see some other things that have been changed even from beta 8. one of the known issues related to core data has been fixed and this is related to the beta 5 sdk there's a resolved issue in the foundation models framework for apple intelligence so it says tool calling might not function properly if primitive types such as int string or bool are used as arguments we have a fix for the create image action so before it would fail to appear in shortcuts and in spotlight but as you can see from my phone right now we do have that showing up in spotlights and it also shows up properly inside of the shortcuts application right here when you use it there are a couple of new known issues for maps as you can see right here related to custom tap gesture callbacks and some other things mentioned right here but we do have a fix down here for messages so one-to-one -one conversations background changes might be attributed in correctly after quitting and reopening the messages app so that now works properly so you should see your background the wallpaper in one-on-one -on -one conversations appear as it should as intended and there are a couple of other small changes in the release notes here for beta 9 and i will leave those linked down in the description below if you are curious to read through those yourself and since I know some people are going to wonder and kind of ask if the liquid glass design has changed in beta 9 from beta 8 here is beta 8 on the left beta 9 on the right you know some people are thinking every time there's an update that it's changed just because you know kind of placebo they don't have the devices side by side but as you can see here you know the button everything it looks identical so liquid glass not changed in beta 9 I did check this in every application you can see kind of how it looks here beta 8 on the left beta 9 on the right everything the buttons everything looks the same and there's a look at the control center i think the control center now is perfect you know ever since the past few betas it's been perfect you could see nothing changed in beta 9. also the animations are the exact same so i tried to see if there's any type of speed difference in the animations but they are identical some people have been kind of upset thinking that the animations are too fast now it kind of takes away from the animation itself I disagree i think the animations are great now they're fast they're fluid and nothing changed from beta 8 to beta 9 there oh and i know something that we can check to see if it's fixed let's see if the wallet section has been fixed here in privacy and security location services let's see if that's been fixed no so wallet the glyph icon is still broken in beta 9 for some odd reason now as far as the performance goes for ios 26 beta 9 i would not really expect any type of change to performance really whatsoever so beta 8 and beta 9 again as far as the code 
goes, the code kind of proves that there's really not much changed between beta 7, 8, and 9. So don't expect performance to be much better, if any different at all. And like I've mentioned before, I think the bigger changes to performance will come with the RC or with later versions of iOS 26, like iOS 26.1, 26.2, and so on. So performance so far on beta 8 was great, and I would expect that to continue here with beta 9. It's still not quite on iOS 18 level yet, obviously, but we should get there in due time. And when it comes to the battery life, once again, I would expect that to be pretty much the exact same as beta 8, which was the exact same as beta 7. If you're still having issues with battery, that might just be a user error. You might want to go into your battery settings and kind of see what's taking up your battery because battery life is solid for a beta at this point. Obviously, it's still not close to as good as iOS 18. It is still a beta. I would expect even the final version of 26.0 to not be as good as iOS 18. It typically takes quite a few betas or quite a few you know, point releases until we get to a really good place in terms of battery life and honestly performance as well, especially with the liquid glass design. But anyways, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple because you know, beta nine was not necessarily an expected release. It's not super unsurprising since it is liquid glass. You know, that is more of a reason for Apple to continue pushing out more betas. But, you know, anyways, next week we should be seeing iOS 26 RC. So we should be seeing that next week immediately after the iPhone events. We are seeing the iPhone 17 event on Tuesday, September 9th. So we should be seeing the RC build for all of the software, including iOS 26, after that event concludes. And of course, in that release is when we could be seeing some new features that were announced with the iPhone 17 that might be coming to older devices as well. Things like, you know, changes to the camera and so on. So we should be seeing hopefully at least one or two changes in that RC build, along with potentially better performance and battery life. So we'll talk about that when the day comes. But as far as the final official release for iOS 26, we should be seeing that the following week, most likely on Monday, September 15th. And as usual, that should be the same build as the RC. So if you install the RC, you will have the final before you know the general public. There is a chance of a small build number change, but that is most likely going to be the final release or very close to it. But anyways, guys, that's iOS 26 beta 9. Really not a whole lot to talk about, just like with beta 8. But I did just want to inform you guys and kind of tell you about beta 9 and you know what to expect, what not to expect, and what's coming next. So if you guys enjoyed this video, regardless, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the RC video next week. And then the following week, the final official release and a lot of other fun videos. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.